Good morning. It's 11.30 Eastern time and that means it is time for first chapter fun. If this is the first time you've tuned into this um, initiative, it's the place where every day uh, from late Mar middle of March until early May, I read the first chapter of a new book at 11.30. Hello Jennifer down on Instagram and Amanda, so lovely to see you both. And we have Hank Philippi Ryan who's joined us up on Facebook, so lovely to see you. So and this is where I'm recording uh, simultaneously down on, hi Meredith and hi Lisa down on Instagram here and on Facebook up here, which is always interesting, hi Hank, when um, one or the other drops me, which does happen. So if that happens, I've been saying this over the past couple of days, if I freeze and the connection drop, drops, it's my fault, it's something I said and Facebook isn't liking it. Um, so don't worry, if I do freeze, I will go, I will continue recording on the platform that lets me and go back to the one that's booted me out and start again. So lovely to have uh, Nancy joining us on Facebook and Elizabeth, hi Elizabeth. I am reading from Elizabeth's book today. Uh, we have Amy as well down on Instagram, lots and lots of people joining, which is lovely. It's the weekend, it's Saturday, Saturday of a long weekend, although to be fair, I'm not really sure it matters at this point. I've woken up many a day thinking, what day is it? Um, same for you guys? Yeah, certainly same, same here, really not sure sometimes. So we do know though that 11 at 11.30 Eastern, it's first chapter fun time, so at least that's anchored. Would you believe this is episode 26? That's right, episode 26. Hi Kaylee. Um, hi Sandy. So actually, um, we're halfway through the series because I have 52 days lined up. Um, so halfway through, but don't be too sad because there are some plans in the works to continue this series, not daily, um, after, after May. So we'll... We'll see. I'll keep you posted. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll reveal. All will be revealed in good time. But without further ado, let me introduce you to today's book, which is The Green Line by E.C. Diskin, also known as Elizabeth. Lovely, lovely Elizabeth. I met Elizabeth at Bouchercon a couple of years ago, and she's just the best. She's really lovely. She's whip smart. And she looks like Phoebe or Phoebe's mum in Friends. Very weird. Um, not weird, lovely. So this is the book I'm reading from today. So let me introduce you to Elizabeth, who writes under the name of E.C. Diskin. So E.C. Diskin, a former attorney, it's, you know, authors are so smart. I mean, I, I read these bios and it's just incredible that the level of expertise and knowledge, and it's, it's amazing. So, E.C. Diskin, a former attorney, jumped into writing with The Green Line, which I'll be reading from today, a thriller set in Chicago. The book was inspired by her years as an attorney and her desire to bring attention to a disturbing and often abused legal manoeuvre, civil forfeiture. After the book landed on various Amazon bestseller lists, she wrote Psychological Thriller, Broken Grace, another instant Amazon bestseller that explored the darkness lurking among the serenity of rural southwest Michigan as a young woman suffering from TBI and amnesia after a near fatal car accident faces murder allegations. Her next Depth of Lies was a domestic suspense filled with sex, lies and murder in the burbs, sounds right up my street, I don't mean right up my street, street, you know what I mean. Her, net, um, her latest, Desperate Paths, spins a fast-paced tale of crime and judgment in middle America, jumping into hot-button issues like Me Too and Black, Black Lives Matter, police misconduct, religious extremists and more. With every story, Diskin aims to create binge-worthy, just one more chapter reads that linger because otherwise life gets in the way. When she's not reading, writing, or stressing about things she can't control, I think we're sisters, Elizabeth, she's usually designing, building, and playing with power tools, which I find equally fascinating. So um, we decided that I would read from the green line today because 
while it's Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth's debut from 2013, it's 99 cents. It's on sale right now on Amazon. I'll wait, just make yourselves a note or go and click right now uh, because all month, the whole month of April, the green line on sale, 99 cents on Amazon. You can't really go wrong, can you? You really can't. And if that hasn't convinced you yet, let me read you the description and show you the cover again for those of you who have just joined. This is what I'm reading from. My goodness, I really can't see anything when I have those on. The Green Line by E.C. Diskin. There we go. This is the blurb. In the green line, Abby Donovan's decade-long dream of partnership at her prestigious Chicago law firm is just months from fruition. But after a late-night train mishap drops her into a world of drugs, gangs, murder and corruption, everything changes. Abby is haunted by what and who she's seen and the mysterious death of a kind stranger. Though her work suffers, deadlines are missed and her promotion hangs in the balance, she's compelled to investigate with the help of an unlikely new friend. But Abby's investigation jeopardises more than her career. Someone is watching and he's not going to let a nosy lawyer expose his scam. In this engaging debut, E.C. Diskin, a former Chicago attorney, takes us on a fast-paced thrill ride with, believable and, with a believable and flawed heroine. Readers will relate to her, fear for her and get a glimpse inside Chicago's best and worst. From the roughest streets of the west side to the estates of the North Shore, Abby Donovan and the unexpected villains of the Green Line will keep you turning pages late into the night in this riveting new thriller while shining light on a little known, often used and wildly abused legal manoeuvre. Once again, it's on sale right now on Amazon for 99 cents for the whole month of April. There's no excuse not to pick it up. And there's the cover again. So, let me read you the green mile, the green, green mile, no, the green line. I knew that was gonna happen. The green line by E.C. Diskin. And um, I'm gonna put a caveat on this. This takes place in Chicago. But you know, if you've been watching this by now, I'm rubbish at accents, so. It's going to sound like a couple of people are from London in it, so bear with me while I read this. So this is The Green Line by E.C. Diskin, Chapter 1. Chicago, January 2004. A woman's voice, deep and coarse from thousands of cigarettes and too much liquor, roused Abby into consciousness. The woman, seated a few rows ahead on the opposite side of the aisle, was arguing with the empty seat across from her. Her grey hair, matted and kinky, sprang from her head in every direction. Get away from me, the woman yelled, desperately clutching her plastic bags full of shoes and cups. I know what you're up to. I'll kill you all. She scanned the car and locked eyes with Abby before continuing her rant at the empty seat. If I had me a gun, I'd just shoot all them white people. That's what I'd do. Abby looked around for comfort in the eyes of other passengers. Only three others were on board. They were not comforting. An older man, presumably homeless and drunk, was asleep. Two young guys, maybe twenty, covered in tattoos, gold chains and baggy clothes, sat across the aisle behind her. Thugs. Something wasn't right. Abby fumbled for her glasses to read the train map. The green-coloured chart of stops plastered above the doors confirmed her mistake. Her heart began beating faster and her body tensed. Shit! She was on the green line. She'd been waiting for the brown line, watching as two green line trains came and went, silently cursing as her time for sleep slipped away. She'd stood under the heat lamps, reading her cases and highlighting good quotes and relevant facts for her brief, when another train had finally pulled into the station. She'd barely looked up. She just stepped into the empty car, took a seat and kept reading and, obviously, fell asleep. Abby looked at her watch and realised she'd been sleeping for about 15 minutes. Given the time, 11.25pm, she was now several miles west of the loop. She looked up at the train grid again, checking the stops to see if she could figure out how far she'd gone and if there was a safe stop where she could turn around and wait for an eastbound train. 
she had no idea. She wasn't from Chicago. Everyone she knew lived north of the Loop, along the lake, where the city was vibrant, full of restaurants, boutiques and chain stores, and where she'd always felt relatively safe. All Abby had ever been told of the area west of the Loop was, you don't want to go there. Last week's front page story in the Tribune had highlighted this fact. The article, which described how Chicago had regained its dubious distinction as the nation's murder capital, having reached 600 murders in 2003, illustrated where these deaths occurred, using red dots and a grid of the city. At the time, Abby had felt great relief. Her neighbourhood had just two red dots. She'd never been to any of the heavy red dot areas, and she saw no reason why she ever would. This train was headed into the heaviest red dot zone. Her mother's warnings about the dangers of a big city began filling her head. She thought of the pepper spray her mother sent her years ago, which she'd laughed at, thrown in the kitchen junk drawer and never touched again. The rain-soaked windows framed blackness. There was no way to judge her surroundings. Staring at the window, Abby saw the thug's reflection in the glass. One stared at her. She instinctively looked back at him. He smiled. The fleur de lis design on his shaved head was the symbol of her old Kappa Kappa Gamma. Many of her lily-white Southern Belle sorority sisters had rebelliously tattooed the same flower design on their ankles. He was clearly in a different club. Abby remained blank-faced and looked away again, trying to avoid encouragement without pissing him off. It didn't seem to matter. Through the window's reflection, she watched him nudge his buddy, stand up and head her way. He took the seat behind her, leaned forward and whispered in her ear, Hey, pretty lady. She could feel his breath on her neck and smell the odour of too much cologne. Afraid of appearing rude, but without turning around, she offered a weak, Hello. What you up to? She glanced toward the window for its mirrored effect and watched as he touched her hair. Just going home, she said as casually as possible. She leaned forward and gathered her things. How about I go with you? His friend chimed in. Yeah, how about we both go? The man behind her laughed. You know what they say about redheads? He didn't wait for a response. They're wild. Abby's stomach was tightening in fear. The friend laughed. That's right. She looks like she could handle us both, don't you think? Abby didn't turn around. Thanks, but I'm married. She put her briefcase strap over her head and across her chest, grabbed her purse and walked to the door. Hey, where are you going? She stared at the door, avoiding any more eye contact. Don't see no ring. You're afraid of me? Abby didn't respond. The friend chimed in again. I think she's rude. The thug continued, getting louder. Hey, talking to you. Think you're too good for me, you bitch. Abby shook her head. The men laughed. She continued to watch their movement through the window's reflection. They were together again, both sitting with their heads on the grab bars in front of their seats, ready to pounce. The train pulled up to the next stop, Cicero, and the doors opened. Abby remained still, feeling the weight of their intention. But as, she, but as the automated ringing sound indicated doors closing, she jumped off. The doors shut behind her and she turned back. The thugs, now just a foot away, stood on the other side of the doors, waving her off, laughing. The train pulled away. Abby finally exhaled, pushing out the air that had been trapped in her chest. She took several low, deep breaths to calm her racing heartbeat and walked toward the heat lamps to wait for an eastbound train, while the passengers who had exited from other cars headed down the stairs off to her right. She hit the giant red button inside the enclosure and watched as the coils in the lamps above began to turn red. Calmed by the hint of warmth, she closed her eyes for a moment and let the faint sound of raindrops pounding the street below fill her ears. She pushed her hands deep into her trench pockets and cursed her rejection of the gloves, hat and umbrella that had been perched by the front door this morning. A 40 degree day in January had seemed balmy, but now it felt more like 30. She stared at her watch and began weighing her options. At this point, it would take another 10 or 15 minutes to get back to the loop, and then she'd have to wait for the brown line. 
It would be another 20 minute ride and a five minute walk home. It was no use. She would just have to go back to the office and hope for an available cot in the library. Like this, like this train ride was just a break, a little joy ride. Maybe it would all seem funny tomorrow. That was part of the first chapter of The Green Line by E.C. Diskin. I'm going to show that again. What happens to Abby? I need to know and I'm going to read it and so should you, especially because it's A, fantastic and B, on sale on Amazon for 99 cents right now. So get your hands on it. And of course, as always, I will save these videos um, on uh, Instagram Live and on my Facebook page. So please, please leave a question or comment for Elizabeth, for E.C. Diskin. Um, author of this wonderful book as well as others so please just leave her a comment or a question we love engaging with readers it's really cool and it's really fun so please um, just leave her a note so tomorrow I will be reading from let me let me get I what are you ready drum roll for Easter Sunday I guess and and, and still pass her over I will be reading from the other misses by Mary Kubica which is brilliant so that is tomorrow's read at 11 30 a.m as always at eastern time on instagram live and facebook live so i hope you'll join me and until then please as always stay safe stay kind and i'll see you tomorrow thanks for watching